everybody, it's Christopher Small, the unconventional attorney, the owner of CMS Law Firm. And today, I want to talk to you about how to scale a law firm. Um, before I get to that, though, I want to remind you, if you are um, not getting the world's greatest law firm email newsletter of all time, then you're missing out. And you're missing out if you're listening to this in the, in the near future on learning about my Black Friday deal, um, which I have. You're also just missing out on sort of my thoughts and, and ideas and, and ramblings and all the good things that can help your business and probably help your life um, by getting that newsletter. It's free. You can go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter. Okay, so today we have another um, newsletter reader question. This question is from Josiah. Josiah says, I started my law firm three months ago. I had a book of business. I haven't advertised and I'm just using contract attorneys and interns as needed. I'm worried to advertise and not be able to handle the volume. I guess scaling is where I feel lost. Do I have contract workers lined up and then advertise and see what happens? Okay. Now, um, it's a great question. The answer to this question for me is it depends. Okay. Where I always like to start when it comes to scaling, when it comes to starting your firm, when it comes to, to basically all of the decisions that you're going to make, the, what I like to do is start at the end and then go backwards or, and then go for, yeah, backwards. Start at the end and then go backwards. So you think to yourself, what do you want this firm to look like? What do you want your life to look like? Do you want to be overseeing a bunch of contract employees um, that that um, will probably be cheaper, um, but will also probably not have a lot of um, loyalty to you, right? Do you want to hire, um, um, do you want to, how big do you want to get? What kind of work are you going to be doing? Are these contract attorneys going to be needing to have client conversations? Or is that something that you are going to do all of? Um, are you going to be signing everybody up? Or do you want to have people um, on your team that can do that as well? Okay, so these are just all the questions that you're going to want to be asking. And if you look at the end and then you look and then you can walk it backwards, then a lot of these questions will be answered. So that's the high level mark. Now, to take this down to like the ground floor to land the plane, as they say, I did not make that up, but people say that. Um, when it comes to scaling in general, I would. I, you sort of um, want to think about it in a stair-step model is, is really the, the healthy way to do it. Right now, you just started. You're ramping up. You have your current book of business. Maybe you're getting some referrals. I'm not sure how you're generating new business. Um, if you are not generating new business, what I would start to do first is just work on generating new business. I wouldn't worry too much about um, how, to, how to do the work yet. Just know that you you have the potential to get really busy and be really busy for like a for like a minute. It's called frantic. Um, then what you're going to want to do at the same time right now is begin to work on your systems, on your processes, on how things are handled, on how you keep track of all of your work. As your business continues to go um, up in scope and get bigger, these systems and processes are going to be, allow you to hire people. They're going to allow you to sleep at night they're going to allow you to provide an amazing service. If you don't do all of those things now, you're going to be behind the eight ball. And what's gonna happen is then you are going to begin to look for clients and then you are going to um, ramp up, ramp up, and you're gonna get pretty busy. And then you're gonna find that you're going to have to um, uh, uh, go even for a minute, right? This is where you're gonna catch up. This is where you hire somebody to help you. This is where you decide, do you want contract workers or do you want full-time employees? And you're gonna put them into your team and into your system. And as those people um, come on board and begin to perform, then your ability to perform more services for more people will go up and then you can continue to rise with your business again. So that's how I have approached scaling in general. I hired a paralegal first, then I hired another, and then I hired a, a, um, an attorney then I hired another paralegal. Now I'm hiring another attorney and another paralegal that are starting soon. And we'll keep doing that same thing over and over and over again. How you hire and who you bring on and in what order is going to depend a little bit, again, on what you're trying to do, on what uh, type of law you practice, on what your business model looks like, and on other factors like that. So 
Um, when it comes to scaling, I prefer to be getting busy, 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 and then bring somebody on with systems and processes um, at least started and built into place. Because if you, what happens is, shout out to my boy Andrew Norman, who, who taught this concept at the last uh, Sanctuary live meeting, two meetings ago, technically. When you're getting really busy, you're frantic. When you hire someone to help you with this busyness, then you go into double frantic. Because if you don't have good systems or processes, you're gonna bring that person in and then you're gonna to have to spend time working on your clients and you're gonna to have to also spend time onboarding your new person and teaching them what to do. So when you hire somebody, you're not going to get less busy at the beginning, you're going to get more busy. So it's best to have systems and processes in place so that you can bring them on quickly so that it's clear what the expectations are and what they're supposed to do and when, so that you don't drop balls, so that you provide great uh, service, and so that you can just grow as you need to, right? So that's the answer to the question for me. Um, I, don't have, I don't have contract workers lined up. I don't, I'm hiring people, I'm building a team. I want people to stick around for a long time. I want them to be great. I want them to be able to sign up their own people. I want to be able to um, um, run a great law firm. I don't necessarily want to be a great lawyer. That's my own personal preference. Where you fall on that sort of, um, you know, trajectory or on that, on that, on that, whatever that's called. That was me putting my hands out. If you're listening to this, it's up to you. Personal preference. Okay, but that's how I would do it, and that is it. So, um, as always, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have a question or comment, let me know. I will, I will respond. If you know someone needs to hear this, please share it with them. You know, there's a bunch of law firm owners out there. Um, they could use this information. I know they could. Um, let them hear it. Um, and if you're someplace you can subscribe and you wanna don't wanna miss any future episodes, hit the subscribe button. And if you're not um, on my newsletter list, go get on it. The unconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter. It's free. It's amazing. You will love it. It will help you. And um, that's it. As always, I am Christopher Small. I am the unconventional attorney. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Is it, I wonder, is it Dega? Dega? Cool name. I like it. Thank you. Um, have a great day. See ya.